What's up you guys, my name is Mark and welcome to my channel. Today I'll be reviewing the small desktop 3D printer I got from Temu. Because obviously when you think of high quality items, the first place that comes to mind is a website that sells questionable lingerie made by children. Let's go. As mentioned, I got this off Timu and it cost a total of $80, which is ridiculously cheap for a 3D printer. It took about four weeks for it to get delivered and honestly, for a while, I didn't think it was gonna show up. First off, let's talk about packaging. Here's the package of the 3D printer I ordered from Temu. It looks like it was packaged by a child. That's because it honestly probably was packaged by a child. Well, let's break this thing open and see what's inside. All right, the packaging is off, and although it doesn't look like there's any serious damage to the box, it does look to be kind of in rough shape. But let's open this thing up. Okay, wow. It, it literally just looks like everything was thrown together in here. Good Lord. Well, we've got some instructions, which are thankfully all in English. Uh, we've got part of the filament holder, and this is the build plate, I think. Holy crap, that is small. It's literally smaller than my hand. I mean, we're talking like a four by four inches, which, which I mean, makes sense. I mean, that's what it was listed for online. Uh, we've got a, a power supply, some testing filament, a USB-B cord, and a bag of screws with a screwdriver and USB drives. The bulk of the printer looks to be wrapped in this bubble wrap, so let's take that out. We've got the X, Y, and Z axis, and yeah, this stuff feels to be pretty cheap, but once again, it's $80 from Temu, or Timu, I guess, however you say it, so. And then we have the main body here and the extruder. Now I'm gonna lay all this out, and then we can look at the instructions and start building. Okay, I've got everything laid out here. So this is everything that was in the box minus the packaging. If we look at the user manual, it does go through what each of these items are. And it looks like there are some quick installation instructions. Uh, it doesn't look too challenging and it doesn't look like it's gonna take a super long time to assemble. I think the most challenging part is gonna be leveling the printer bed, uh, but let's get started building. The first step is attaching the X axis to the base and I will use one screw to secure the axis in place. Okay, the next step is to attach the build plate to the Y axis. The plate slides on and then there is another screw that goes through the hole on the underside right there. All right, that uh, last step was terrible. Worst experience I've had all day. Wait. Yep, worst experience. I had to get my magnetic screwdriver out so I could actually get the screw down there. Otherwise, I'm fairly certain I would have spent at least an hour trying to get that screw to fall into place. But let's move on. The next step is to attach the Z axis to the base. Now the X axis can be installed on the Z axis. Once again, there will be a screw that secures the axis into place and it has the same configuration as the build plate, so I'll have to use my magnetic screwdriver again. The next step is to take the printer head and slide it onto the X axis. There will also be a screw that goes to the back to keep the extruder in place. All right, now that that's done, I can connect the X, Y, and Z stepper motor wires. Each of them is labeled, so it's really easy to know where which one goes. Um, it would be pretty hard to screw that up. And finally, the last step is to assemble and connect the filament holder. And that's it. It only took about seven steps to assemble the whole printer. The assembly process was overall super easy, besides for the fact that if I didn't have a magnetic screwdriver, I would probably still be on step two. So, before I plug this in and level the print bed, let's go over the controls. On the side of the printer, there is a hole for the power supply, a USB-B cord, a feed and retraction switch for loading filament, and a slot for a TF card. The front of the printer has the print button and then four extra buttons for leveling the print bed. Once the power supply is plugged in, the printer powers on immediately, like there's no power switch. It just turns on. 
kind of seems like a fire hazard. To level the bed, I press the number one on the front of the printer to move the extruder to the first position of the print bed. I use a piece of paper and adjust the screw nut at the bottom of the platform. The height of the platform should be adjusted until there is a slight tug on the paper by the nozzle. I go through positions two, three, and four on the printer bed and repeat this process. I go to each of these positions at least three times to make sure that everything is perfectly level. Now that the printer bed is level, I'm going to load in some filament. By pressing and holding the printer button for three seconds, it raises the extruder high enough from the bed so that I can load the filament. I'm going to use the filament that was provided with the printer for testing. I cut off the end of the filament with nippers to ensure that I have a straight, clean end. I load the filament by feeding it into the extruder until I feel some slight resistance. At that point, the feed switch can be turned on. The printer button will blink green really fast, which means the printer head is heating up. Once the green blinking begins to slow, the gears of the extruder will start turning and grab the filament. Once I see the filament coming out of the nozzle, I can move the feed switch on the side of the printer back to the middle. I was having some trouble with the filament staying on the filament holder, so I moved it closer to the Z-axis and that seemed to work a lot better. I'm now going to take the TF card out of the USB drive packaged with the printer and plug it in. I hit the print button once and the printer starts to print whatever G-code was factory installed on the TF card. I didn't load anything on the TF card, I literally just took it out of the packaging and put it in the printer. I wanted to see just how build ready this printer was directly from the factory. The instructions say that you can use their slicing software called EasyWare that can be downloaded off the TF card provided, or you can also use Cura. A few notes on the parameters of this printer are that it's only meant to print PLA and TPU. It prints at 0.4 millimeter layer height and can heat between 180 and 230 degrees Celsius. The maximum print speed is 40 millimeters per second, and the build space is 100 by 100 by 100 millimeters, so basically a little smaller than a 4 inch cube. I wasn't sure what this was printing at first and thought it might be a star, but it turns out it was a rocket ship. The raft came off the build plate super easy, and you can see a lot of the layer lines, but for an $80 printer, I don't think it's too bad. I'm actually kind of impressed with how easy this thing was to set up and how well it prints right out of the box. Okay, so the big question is, is it worth $80? And I really think that the answer depends on your use case. For example, if you have a kid who wants to get into 3D printing and they keep asking you for a printer, this could be an excellent choice. It's cheap and really easy to put together. Like, I'm pretty sure a four-year-old could assemble this thing. They probably did, actually. If your kid prints one thing off and decides that they never want to use it again, look, you spend $80 and maybe 30 minutes of your time. No harm, no foul. Even if you're an adult and you want to get into 3D printing, but you don't want to buy a big expensive printer, this could also be a good way for you to like, I don't know, test the waters. Now, for someone like me who prints all the time, makes a lot of cosplay items, I would not recommend it. But then again, I don't really think people like me are the intended audience. I think it's intended for people that are just getting into 3D printing or for people that want a small printer at work or on their desktop. I mean, it's literally called a desktop 3D printer. So. After all, I could spend about $150 on a brand new Ender 3, which is arguably one of the best printers out there for the cost. I'll probably end up bringing this printer to work and maybe print off some fidget toys or knickknacks or something like that. Okay, so in conclusion, I actually do think it's pretty cool that you can get a printer this small and it's basically ready to print right out of the box. And if you're looking to get into 3D printing or you have a kid that wants to get into 3D printing or start a hobby out of it, this could be a really good starting point. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a like and consider subscribing to my YouTube channel for more content. Until then, thank you and stay classy.